Good day everyone, welcome to GigiMad. So this time let's talk about continuous random variable and probability density function. Now let's recall what a continuous random variable is. So it is a CRV that can actually take any real value in a given interval which may be finite or infinite. An example of a CRV is uh, weight. So there's no such thing as exactly equal to 65 kilograms. So your weight can actually be 65.6567. It can be infinite, right? So it does just make sense that the continuous random variable can take a real value in a given interval. Now, unlike distribution, uh, probability distribution of discrete random variable, we can actually come up with a table and we can list all the values and their probabilities. But for the CRV, uh, it can only be described using a function, which we actually call as probability density function. So if you would like to get the probability of uh, the CRV in a given interval, so that can be described by the area under the graph of the PDF, which actually looks like this. So if this is our PDF or probability density function, so the area or sorry, the probability of X from A to B is actually the area under this curve. Now, if you're talking about the area under the curve and the X axis, so that means integration is involved here. So in symbols, it can be denoted as the integral of the f of x with respect to x that is from a to b and that is equal to our probability of the continuous random variable x that is more than a but equal to b. So it doesn't make sense that if we are going to get the probability of, uh, of x which is equal to a certain value, um, it's actually going to be equal to zero. All right? So... Okay, now what uh, makes a probability density function? So no probability can ever be negative. So that is a basic concept of probability. And we know that the total probability over all cases must be equal to one. So always take note of that, that probability is only ranging from zero to one inclusive. Okay, so that makes the requirement of a probability density function. So for an f of x to be a PDF, so we can say that the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of our f of x with respect to x must be equal to 1. So this is the sum of all the probabilities and that must be equal to 1 and our f of x must be greater than or equal to 0. So what does this mean? So the area that we're looking for is the area bounded by the curve that is in that is above the x-axis, okay? Because our f of x must be greater than or equal to 0. So we are quite familiar with normal distribution. That is an example of a probability density function in uh, the normal distribution um, is defined to be f of x is equal to 1 over standard deviation times the square root of 2 pi multiplied to e to the power of negative 1 over 2 times the standard deviation multiplied to the square of x minus the mean. So it is going to be quite challenging to get the exact integral of this. So that's why we need a GDC or graphic display calculator to find the probabilities under the curve of this function and the x-axis. So uh, let's take a look at this example. So example number one, a continuous random variable x has probability density function f of x is equal to kx times 5 minus x and that is our x is um, more than or equal to 0 but less than or equal to 5. Um, f of x is equal to 0 if it is otherwise. So meaning if it is uh, beyond this interval, the probability is going to be equal to zero. So this is what we call a um, piecewise function. So we need to find the value of k. So we need to find the value of k by using the definition of a PDF. So the area under the curve will be denoted by the integral of kx multiplied to 5 minus x with respect to x, that is from 0 to 5. And this probability, the sum of the probabilities or the sum of the area must be equal to 1. 
All right, so we can bring out the k here. So we can just focus on uh, finding the integral of 5x minus x squared with respect to x. And we know that it is equal to 5x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3. So this is the integral. And then everything will be multiplied to k. And then this time, we need to evaluate the integral from 0 to 5. And uh, the value must be equal to 1. So if we do that, so we start with the upper limit, so 5 times 5 squared over 2 minus 5 cubed over 3, and then this should be subtracted to the value of our integral at x um, is equal to 0. So by calculating that, if we calculate this, simplify this, and then we will get 125 over 6 times k equals 1, and then from here we can already have the value of k which is equal to 6 over 100. Okay, so since we have already found the value of k, so we can now get the probability of the CRV that is uh, more than 1 but less than 3. So from letter A, the setting up is going to be the same, but the limits are, uh, are going to be different and it will be from 1 to 3. So remember this is our value of k. So the integral will also be the same and we need to evaluate this uh, integral from 1 to 3. So we begin with evaluating this at uh, x equals 3 and then minus that to at x equals 1. And um, after simplifying that we are going to get 6 over 125 multiplied to 27 over 2 minus 13 over 6 and we already know what to do and we will get the probability which is equal to 68 over 125 so if you get the decimal value of this this is exactly at 0 0.544 so this is uh, less than 1 or this is within 0 and 1 so it does make sense Okay, now let's take a look at example number two. So sketch the function and find f of x is equal to another piecewise function here in which this is uh, equal to 0.8 sine x provided that our x is more than or equal to zero but less than pi over two. Uh, our PDF is going to be equal to 0.8 cosine 4x as long as our x is more than or equal to pi over 2 but less than or equal to 5 pi over 8. Now if it's otherwise then our f of x is just going to be equal to 0. So using the graphic display calculator TI Inspire CX. So you open your calculator and then you go to add graphs and then let's input our piecewise function by clicking on this and since we have uh, three functions making up the piecewise so you have to choose a three here and the first one is 0 0.8 sine x 0 0.8 sine x and then this is from um okay so zero so our inequality symbols are in here so control equals sign and then we have to choose this uh less than or equal and then followed by x and then control equal uh, less than and then pi over 2 so the fraction uh, symbol is in here so let's choose this fraction and then we have uh, pi over 2 our pi is in here so we choose pi and then over 2 then the next one is 0 0.8 uh, cosine 4x okay and this is from Okay, pi over 2, so we choose the fraction again. Okay, and then pi is here. And then over 2. And then we need to get the uh, less than or equal. And then we have x. And then less than or equal. And then fraction again, because our endpoint here is 5 pi over 8. Okay, so pi again, then 8. All right, then the third one is 0. So uh, 0 if it's otherwise, so you, don't, you can just leave this blank. So after that, press enter, and then we will have this function. So as you can see, that is from 0 to pi over 2, so we have this curve. And we can see from here that this is uh, 
this is qualified to be a prob probability density function because everything is above the x-axis, okay? Now, let's try to check if the area under the curve is actually equal to 1. So what we can do is to find the integral of the piecewise function. So how are we going to do it? So let's just add a page, okay, control uh, document. So let's add calculator here. And since we want the integral, so let's uh, find the integral in here and which is this one, right? Okay, so this is uh, going to be with respect to x. So this is where we are going to put our piecewise function. So let's get a piecewise function. Let's just copy it, okay? So uh, it is going to be, all right. Okay, so let's highlight that and then control uh, C. All right, and then let's go back to our uh, second page and then control V and then we will have this function, okay? So, um, all right, so we need to input here that is actually uh, from 0 to 5 pi over 8. So let's just input that and this is uh, 5 pi over 8. Five pi over eight. Okay, now let's get the answer, and we will get one. All right. So what if we just want to get the integral of this piecewise function, or the integral of our probability density function that is from one point two to one point eight? So, all right. So let's try that. So what we can do is just copy this. Okay, highlight and then enter, and then we can now change the limits, 1.2 to 1.8. All right, so we are going to get the probability, the probability then is equal to 0 0.448 or 0 0.449 in three significant figures. Okay, so I have shown you how to sketch the piecewise function using the graphic display calculator. And we actually verified from there that the area under the curve from 0 to 5 pi over 8 is equal to 1. So that makes the our f of x a probability density function. And we also tried to get the probability that is from 1.2 to 1.8. And we got the same answer, which is 0 0.449. But definitely, since these functions are manageable to integrate, we can also do this without the use of graphic display calculator. All right, so that's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you, and see you again next time. Goodbye.